Bill, a popular atheist blogger, says that the new atheism is a train wreck. And when you read uh, the headline to this article, that's what it says, the train wreck that was the new atheism. It's from biologist and associate pre professor at the University of Minnesota, P.Z. Myers. Uh, P.Z. Myers has been a very vocal atheist, uh, quoted a lot. Dawkins has quoted him on occasion on some things. Uh, and he says that the whole thing was a, a, a train wreck. Uh, this is interesting article, Bill, and that it kind of goes back and reminds us how this whole new atheism started. Mm. And it really did start with 9-11, Sam Harris's book, um, and, uh, and suddenly Christopher Hitchens um, uh, lecturing and, and, and speaking out against um, uh, religion. And Wired Magazine is the one that coined the phrase and kind of set it in motion, uh, uh, codified the new atheism when they did this. Uh, now, P.Z. Myers is saying that the whole thing was a train wreck and he didn't want to have anything to do with it. Um, when you've looked over this, uh, it seems that he's quoting an article. There are a couple of articles now saying that the new atheism movement is done. And the reason that it is is because the new atheists have moved to the right. Is that what you're kind of getting the complaint from P.Z. Meyer here? That seems to be his complaint. Uh, he thinks that the new atheism became captivated by the radical right, neoconservatism, Islamophobia, anti-feminism, uh, and so forth. And so I get the impression that Myers isn't so much saying that the influence of the new atheism is over, but that he's had it mm -hmm. with the new atheists. And he doesn't want to be a part of this anymore. He finds it extremely distasteful because it is uh, in contradiction to his more progressive brand of politics. Uh, and so he feels uh, very alienated from the movement. But I don't think that he shows anywhere in his blog that the movement itself has ceased to exist or to exert influence. Okay. He says, yes, I was a new atheist in the second paragraph, past tense again. I promoted it. I happily wore the label. I was initially optimistic that we were going to change the culture. I was naive and stupid. I swallowed some of my early reservations. Is this just a reaction against Bush fueled by xenophobia inspired by the September 11th bombings? but figured that would pass, that people would step in the door and then find enduring meaning in science and evidence-based reasoning. Boy, was I wrong. And Bill, if we could, would just refer quickly to how the article that he's referring to, how it starts. Jacob Hamburger wrote this article in The Point. He says, by 2014, many Americans had forgotten about new atheism. For liberal Americans in the depths of the Bush years, anti-religious bestsellers by Sam Harris, Richard Dawkins, and Christopher Hitchin came as, for lack of a better word, a godsend. <laughs> With the Christian right in the White House and jihadist terrorism perceived to be a constant danger in the wake of 9-11, a vocal, rational atheism appeared to many a natural and necessary counterweight. But... After nearly six years of Barack Obama's presidency, Bush and his born-again gang were far from the presidency, were far from the high seats of power. The war on terror was no longer a feature of most people's daily lives, and there was a widespread impression of leftward progress on social issues. Therefore, the services of the anti-religious crusaders were no longer needed. <laughs> So, I wonder what he thinks today with the election of Trump. Well, it, I wondered the same thing because it, now it needs, it's, it's either all going to come rushing back <laughs> or um, because when you compare the Bush presidency and Trump's presidency, I mean, uh, Bush was a lot more moderate. Uh, yes, I think by that's comparison, true. You know. yeah. Well... So the odd thing, though, is that Myers thinks that 
these new atheists are basically in Trump's corner, so to mm -hmm. speak, that they are uh, hyper conservatives, uh, as I say, Islamophobic and anti-feminist. They wouldn't be sympathetic with the Me Too movement. And that's why he has such disdain for these new atheists because of their right-wing politics. Mm -hmm. And that surprised me too. That's, that's what Jacob Hamburger says as well. The atheists, these young atheists, they've all moved alt-right. And they're white nationalist, and they go on Reddit, and they're, they're not in any way uh, sensitive to liberal policies and liberal sensitivities. They're very anti-politically correct. And they're saying that this is the way, this is what the, the, the new atheists are now. That surprises me, and uh, they may be right. I mean, he, he may be right on that analysis. Yes, for me as a philosopher, I don't follow the politics of these people. I, I couldn't care less what Christopher Hitchens or Sam Harris's or Richard Dawkins' politics are. I'm interested in their critique of theism and their arguments for atheism. Um, and for me, the, the political dimension is just not all that interesting. Sure. And, you know, uh, having said that, that's pretty much what th this whole complaint is. This is all political. It's from a political perspective. Whether or not God exists, whether or not Christianity is true is beside the point. Mm -hmm. It's how does it affect public policy, mm -hmm. you know? and. Uh, Boy, that just that just seems to be the the, the crux. Um, he ends the article by saying, "It's interesting where the old guard have ended up. Hitchens has died, but his fans continue the process of apotheosis." Uh, P.Z. Meyer says, "I don't even want to talk about him anymore because it usually prompts a deluge of people trying to patch over the ugly bits of his reputation. He was a saint, don't you know?" They say. Dennett has basically retired from the fray. Maybe he was the smartest of the four uh, apocalyptic, uh, uh, four horsemen of the new atheism. Maybe he was the smartest of the four, although I would argue with him fiercely on his misunderstandings of evolution. At least he kept his discussions on a philosophical plane. Harris, the worst of the bunch, is also the most successful. He has successfully pandered to the most regressive members of his audience and continues as an alt-right intellectual dark web figurehead and is continuing to profit. If anyone is a symbol of the moral and intellectual corruption of the new atheism, though, he is it. Wow, and he's talking about Sam Harris there. Mm -hmm. um, I think his complaint is that Sam Harris seems to uh, be saying things that can be really interpreted as rather racist, um, at least as far as uh, you know, liberal people. I was interested, say. too, in the anti-feminist tone that he perceives in many of the so-called new atheists. It's, it's just a fact that a number of their prominent figureheads have been found guilty of sexual harassment and misconduct. And so awards from the Humanist Society have been rescinded. Uh, uh, some of them have been banned from their own university campuses. Uh, buildings have been renamed because of this. There's quite a number of these figures in the new atheism that have been convicted of sexual harassment and other forms of misconduct. It's, mm -hmm. it's really quite amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lots of accusations, for sure. Then he says, Dawkins had the most well-earned prestige. He's ended up squandering his reputation with repeated foot shootings. <laughs> uh, I looked up uh, the reference that P.Z. Myers is talking about, and uh, the article that he's talking about is headline like this. British scientists don't like Richard Dawkins. Find study that didn't even ask about Richard Dawkins. So they volunteered this <laughs> opinion. <laughs> um, 
And so then, you know, this is a this is a two page article here that um, that we're looking at here, and that is well, the the main criticism is that he tended to go uh, out on Twitter and uh, uh, tweet some things that just constantly irritated people. Yes, making ridiculous comments, shooting himself in the foot. What the I think general public doesn't realize is that Richard Dawkins ceased to do serious science decades ago. Mm. Uh, his position at Oxford is simply a, a professor for the public understanding of science, and, and he, he doesn't do serious science or publish in peer-reviewed journals. He, he's just a popularizer. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. I thought it was significant in this article the reaction of one non-religious physicist who said, as a scientist, you've got to be very open. And I'm open to people's belief in religion. I don't think we're in a position to deny anything unless it's something which is within the scope of science to deny. I think, as a scientist, you should be open to it. It doesn't end up encroaching for me because I think there's quite a space between the two. Hmm. And that is a very sensible position that Dawkins doesn't seem to appreciate. Uh, religious beliefs are not something that fall within the domain of science, except insofar as they might impinge upon the created world. And therefore, this scientist is quite right in saying you, you need to be open to the possibility of these beliefs. Sure. Well, Bill, as we wrap up the podcast, um, he says that the four horsemen of the new atheism uh, are basically gone. Hitchens has died. Um, Sam Harris can possibly be labeled uh, with ties to bigotry and, and anti-feminist uh, views. Dawkins has, has shot himself in the foot and uh, Daniel Dennett really isn't doing anything um, and, and never rose to the prominence of the other three. And there's really not another group or another leader who's emerging as representative of atheism. Uh, I mean, there's still plenty of people who promote it, like Bill Maher, but he is an obnoxious comedian, you know. <laughs> He'll make you laugh, but he's, you know, he did the movie Rel Religulous and, and so on. He's not representative. Uh, and so uh, the whole thing, new atheism has swung to this radical right. Uh, it seems alt right. Um, that's that's interesting, mm -hmm. um, but it really does seem a lot of this shows that it's a political thing. Therefore, it's an emotional resistance to whether God exists and not a philosophical. Right, and for Myers himself, he continues to be an atheist. He just is repulsed by the politics of the new atheist movement, but he remains a committed atheist and secularist. Oh, and, and by the way, the Times just put it in our article, uh, atheism is down in the UK. Uh, it says that atheism is down as the UK gets spiritual. Wow. Uh, I didn't expect this. We've been decrying the decline uh, for so long in the UK, but um, uh, the Times commissioned a study. Um, the proportion who said that they do not believe in any sort of God or greater spiritual power, definable as atheist, fell from 38% in 2016 to 36% in 2017 and to 33% wow. in 2018 with indications. That That's very exciting, more. Kevin. Belief in God was steady, right at 30%. Uh, those who don't know increased from 12 to 14 percent, mm -hmm. that little nudge there, while those who believe in some sort of spiritual greater power rose from 23 to 24 um, percent. Asked how often they attended church, not counting weddings or funerals, those who said never fell from 63 percent in 2016 to 61% in 2017, to 56% in 2018. Uh, by contrast, you know, churches, uh, church attendance seems to be going back up. That's a, a very welcome trend. I have a 
friend in uh, England who helped to organize our 2007 and 2011 speaking tours in the UK. And he wrote to me recently just remarking that there seems to be a new mood in the country and that they do seem to have turned a corner and that they're, uh, that people do seem to be open to the idea of Christian faith um, again. So uh, that just is anecdotal, but these um, statistics that you share from the Times seems to bear out my friend's impression. That's very welcome. It is. And finally, it says that the proportion of people who pray has risen. So we pray that that continues. Amen. Amen.